say something in chat. <laughs> no, it was check the mics, not check the language. All right, uh, it's time. Hi, I'm Don Fedick. Uh, this is Donald Eastlake, and um, we have Ronald Infelt on the uh, uh, remote. Uh, we're the chairs of the Mane Working Group. Um, so we'll show the, the slides here, the note well. Um, you know, as a reminder, by participating in the IETF, you agree to follow the IETF processes and policies. Um, and that's defined down in these documents down here. I'm sure you've all seen this, so we'll get to the next. And then the note really well, IT of meetings, virtual meetings and mailing lists are intended for professional collaboration and networking as defined in the IETF guidelines of conduct and the anti-harassment policy and the IETF anti-harassment policies. If you have any concerns about the observed behavior, please talk to the ombudsman who are available if you need confidentially to raise concerns, uh, confident about harassment or any other contact in the ITF. The ITF strives to create and maintain an environment in which people of many different backgrounds and identities are treated with dignity, decency, and respect. Those who participate in the ITF are expected to behave accordingly and professional standards and demonstrate appropriate workplace behavior. ITF participants must not engage in harassment while at ITF meetings, virtual meetings, social events, or on mailing lists. Harassment is unwelcome hostile and intimidating behavior, in particular speech behavior that is aggressive or intimidates. If you believe you've been harassed or are noticed something else is being harassed or if any other concerns, you're encouraged to arrange your concern and confidence to one of the ombudsmen. All right, so the agenda, um, we have uh, the introduction, um, we have uh, any comments if anybody wants to bash the agenda? Can we have some note takers, uh, volunteer note takers? Uh, hopefully we got some note takers. Um, usually somebody steps up and, and, and does it. But um, So we have a couple of presentations um, and uh, we're going we're to talk, we're talk about the uh, current drafts. Uh, hopefully Ronald can give us an update on that. And then we have a couple of presentations and then we're going to talk about the charter discussion and if there's anything else. Anybody else like to bring up any uh, anything before we go on to the status of the work group drafts? Ronald, can you give us an update on the... Uh, the yes. Uh, sadly, they have not progressed um, much or at all since uh, last time. Uh, there is, however, a reason for that, uh, I have to say. Uh, I don't know uh, whether people have noticed that I was uh, not active on the mailing list uh, for uh, a month or so. But uh, I had a slight uh, problem, which also landed me in hospital for a few days. Um, I have just about recovered. This is my first week back at work. Um, so the only thing I've managed to do is uh, pro, um, produce another Shepard write-up, this time for the traffic classification uh, draft. So if people can have a look at that, uh, see if I've completed all the questions in, uh, in the right fashion, and I will follow that up uh, yeah, tomorrow, I guess, with the two remaining uh, drafts, because uh, all these Shepard write-ups are very similar. I will then push um, DLAB Ether Credit Flow Control extension to 
um, transport area review because uh, David Black has not seen that one. Um, David Black in the past specifically uh, asked us to justify why we have four drafts. And I think the justification is now given in the uh, Shepherd write-up, at least for um, the two that I have completed. But uh, the, the same, the same bit of text will be in the other two. Uh, and then I will also put the uh, progress these things, um, subject them to um, routing area review. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that. Uh, I can well understand the frustration of Lou Berger. He, uh, he may have given up on these things uh, already, but uh, I really uh, uh, still intend to push them through. Are, are you still missing some uh, IPR declarations from some of the authors? Y yes. Um, it seems that the uh, co-authors of Lou Berger are not really uh, responding anymore to uh, requests uh, for IPR declarations. The situation is as follows. Um, credit flow control, diff serve credit flow control extension and traffic classification have three authors. Um, we are still needing the IPR declaration of uh, Bonan Cheng for that one. Um, but David Wickens has responded to that uh, a long time ago. However, um, for DLAP Ether credit flow control extension, uh, there's only Lou Berger and David Wiggins as uh, authors. And David Wiggins did not uh, react to a request uh, for an IPR uh, statement because that was sent far more recently, just before the San Francisco meeting. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have Lou in the, in the queue. OK. Uh, so two things. On the co-authors, I can try to reach out to uh, Bonan if you need anything from him. I haven't talked to him in years, but I can try to see uh, if I reach him. Uh, David Wiggins, uh, I think, is no longer um, working or reachable. So it's unlikely we can get him to respond. So okay, I thanks. Wanna, I don't know what you want to do about it. I mean, he certainly was an active uh, co-author during the time we wrote this. We haven't changed anything in a lot of in a lot of time. So, but I don't expect we would be able to reach him. No, and I I, uh, I know the reason that you told me in private. So. Uh... Um, yeah, I, I don't know either. Um, I did send out uh, an email um, to Bonan uh, around uh, around ITF uh, 117, or just before, um, but there was no response. Yeah, again, I haven't talked to him in years. I can try to reach out to him and see if he responds. Uh, once yeah. I have a phone number, I'll have to dig it up. Yeah. Um, so I'll try that. Do you need anything else from the authors in order to progress these documents? I have been. Uh, yeah, I, I will. I will write something on the mailing list. Um, I've been looking at the history of um, RFC eighty six fifty one, and in particularly, in particular, the security section. And um, the security section of. Um, for instance, DLAP credit flow control is very similar to an earlier version, to the security se section in an earlier version of uh, the draft that, that became 8651. And then it went through a number of, uh, say, enhancements uh, based on uh, comments from the IESG. And um, it became a more full-fledged security section uh, in the final uh, draft in the RFC. And I think we can stave off some, some of that same comments uh, in the new uh, IESG process by more or less copying from 8651 into, um, into these drafts. But I'll, I'll, I'll write that up on the mailing list. 
Okay, I, I uh, think just copying information that is in a base document rather than pointing to the base document is, um, uh, I guess, not a way I would go. I would point to the base document unless there is something new being introduced. And if there's something new, we need to treat that appropriately. But if it's just repeating what's there, well, that it, we're, we're right in an extension to a base protocol. We shouldn't have the same considerations, in my opinion. I tend to I tend to agree. Um, but we can talk talk the details once you get it on list. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, if you need anything else, just let me know, and I'll do my best to reach out to Bonan and. Uh, with, with respect to David, maybe have an offline conversation with the AD about it and uh, or the or the editors. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you very much. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Hi, this is Donald. I just wanted to say there there are, is a process whereby if uh, it's impossible to get an IPR declaration from an author uh, with the AD's approval, it can be put through, uh, assuming you've made all reasonable efforts to contact the author, et cetera, and the AD decides it's the way to go. Okay, so we'll move is on. There, to... Is there a, a reference in any form to that process or protocol? Not that I'm aware of. So Ronald, it's uh, Jim. Um, as Donald said, if, if you've made every effort to uh, to contact one of the authors, then I, gu I guess we have a, a, a couple of choices. Um, but I can uh, take that as an action. I'll check with the ISG. You know what uh, what the best practice is. One, one option is to move the author from the front page as a contributor. That's one option if the working group agrees to that. Um, the second option is that, you know, I can approve it based on, you know, showing that we've made every effort, but leave that one with me and I'll, uh, I'll take that action. Thank you. Next, we have the uh, presentation by Henning. Henning, can you speak to this? Is somebody looking? Is he trying to talk or? We cannot hear you. Can you try turning on your camera and see if we can see you. Uh, we never did hear you on this side, I don't think, Henning. Um, so in the meantime, we could we could go to Abdusam's um, presentation and we'll see if you can get it working. All right. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. My name is uh, Abdul Salam Baryun. Uh, the presentation is uh, about managed use, use cases and uh, proposed managed routing protocols. Uh, actually, this uh, presentation uh, came out, out of uh, discussions uh, on the mailing list uh, 
before and uh, maybe also recently in this uh, uh, year. Uh, next page, please. Usually, uh, looking at them and uh, use cases, uh, uh, we, we, we referenced uh, the RFC uh, 2501, uh, which was, was uh, uh, mainly uh, referenced by all, I think, uh, our uh, documents. Uh, and uh, usually, uh, it has been from uh, maybe, uh, I think, 99 or about... Uh, so it's uh, been a long uh, time, and I asked before to, to uh, if we can maybe uh, update this uh, uh, RFC document to include some new technologies. Uh, but uh, I think in 2014 or 13, that there was an objection from the working group. Uh, and I still think uh, uh, that maybe we can add some uh, new cases or uh, include it or discuss it also uh, or discuss also scenarios as we see in the news case, uh, new ca use case there are new uh, technologies which are, uh, uh, are invented uh, also there is the uh, 5G solar network and uh, uh, the future uh, the, the IOT uh, emergency communications uh, uh, disaster situation. These use cases are uh, important for MANET, and uh, uh, we, I, I don't think we covered uh, these uh, use cases. Uh, this working group also had uh, already uh, between 2003 and 2007 uh, published experimental uh, uh, MANET routing protocol, about four, two proactive and two reactive protocols. After uh, testing and uh, uh, done uh, implementation for these protocols and uh, uh, evaluating their performance, uh, we got to publish uh, uh, through the working group or the working group uh, participants uh, published uh, the proactive uh, 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 routing protocol in 2014. Next page, please. Uh, through this uh, RFC uh, 2501, the measuring, uh, measuring the protocol performance uh, uh, usually they depend on the uh, important uh, parameters or uh, uh, some uh, me uh, performance metrics we have to uh, check for to to make sure our uh, uh, the routing protocol is uh, is uh, working well or uh, with good performance. As as uh, uh, our experimental uh, routing protocols, uh, we have uh, already got results that. Uh, with changing the network size, the ch checking the, uh, the the connectivity or the number uh, average number of neighbors, uh, topology change, uh, link capacity, uh, mobility. Uh, usually, they were used. Uh, we or uh, from uh, uh, there are some different models. Mobility models were used. Uh, not all, uh, but uh, th there was the testing for. Uh, the, the performance of uh, the, our experimenting uh, routing protocols, and also uh, the fraction of uh, and the frequency sleeping nodes. I I didn't see much uh, results for that, but uh, there were already uh, uh, on IETF uh, uh, public, uh, established a new working group for uh, uh, LLNs uh, and. Uh, and they have already done some work for this uh, particular issue. But it's uh, even though if there's a sleeping node, it it's, 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 it's can be similar or uh, can be taken as a, a lost node, or we can say a, a link uh, drop. Uh, next page, please. 
And the main uh, measuring performance metric uh, was the end-to-end -end delay, uh, uh, also checking the throughput uh, and packet delivery rate, overhead, uh, the routing overhead, uh, and efficiency. Uh, you, you, why why I'm looking at these uh, this uh, performance or the measuring the performance uh, because also I'm uh, uh, interested to uh, to compare our new uh, or any uh, of our new uh, routing protocols uh, to implement it and to check its uh, its performance. Uh, 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 Referencing referencing twenty five uh, zero one, uh, and, uh, and this text uh, and uh, this page uh, for twenty five zero one is uh, interesting and important. Uh, it should be recognized that a routing protocol, or we can say a managed routing protocol, uh, tends to be well suited for particular network context. So. So not all uh, routing protocols work for all uh, network contexts, but still in our documents, uh, we can see a more general uh, uh, general, uh, 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 general description as uh, this managed uh, routing protocol can work for a uh, general uh, purpose, but uh, when we start to look at different mobility models and different uh, uh, traffic loads and uh, uh, connectivities, there are many uh, advantages and limitations for different routing protocols. So saying that we, we only need one routing protocol, I don't think it's a right uh, 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 statement. So by this uh, text, uh, I will go forward for the next page, please. Uh, for managed uh, routing proposals, uh, we had uh, uh, AODV, which uh, 35, uh, 3561 and uh, uh, 4728 as reactive uh, routing protocols experimented and uh, evaluated well uh, for uh, maybe one or two technologies are uh, uh, under layer. Uh, IP and layer, but uh, the AODV version 2 uh, hasn't been uh, completed yet. And I'm proposing here if uh, the authors can uh, restart uh, this AODV. And I'm also interested to propose the DSR version 2 or uh, the dynamic source routing uh, as a uh, man, I, I didn't. I didn't yet publish the draft uh, zero zero, but uh, I'm interested to include the managed packet and message format, which is a general uh, packet format, which uh, our working group had already uh, uh, published as a stand uh, uh, standard uh, uh, 5444. And uh, the, the 6130 is the managed uh, uh, neighborhood discovery protocol. Uh, I may use it as optional in uh, this uh, uh, proposed protocol. And uh, DLIP uh, 8175, it's important uh, for, I think uh, DLIP is, uh, is one of the uh, very important for all routing protocols. With, which uh, which will uh, cover uh, disaster scenarios or uh, disaster use cases and also uh, uh, the emergency uh, uh, communication. For uh, uh, for hybrid uh, routing, we discussed a little for hybrid uh, uh, routing prot uh, protocol, and also in, it's uh, mentioned in the in 25 uh, RFC 2501, uh, which is. Uh, uh, it mentions that we have a reactive routing and proactive and a hybrid, and which was already discussed in many papers and also was discussed on the, the mailing list uh, before maybe even I start participating. Uh, but uh, the important issue is that uh, uh, I, uh, I, I expect that also the 5444 uh, packet message format was uh, was uh, thought of because of 
there, there, there was a view of having the future as a hybrid. First, we start with uh, proactive or reactive, and then in the future, we try to make it uh, one packet or uh, uh, they, they, a hybrid which has routing, uh, with, uh, reactive and proactive. So a hybrid routing protocol was already uh, thought of, I think, in my uh, opinion. Also, uh, uh, fixing a neighborhood uh, protocol uh, as a general, uh, a general uh, interface for all routing protocols was also uh, 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 interest, I think, in uh, the working group. But however, we may leave it until we finish uh, React. Uh, my opinion or my proposal is that we start the hybrid routing uh, with uh, or after we complete uh, uh, reactive uh, uh, standard. Uh, and maybe also there was a, a, a proposal from Chris uh, on the list. I think he, he asked if we can start from proactive, uh, I don't mind as as if we we also look at uh, the reactive, and uh, there is also proposal okay. Uh, okay. for multicasts. Yes, uh, yeah. but that will be complicated. But if we complete hybrid uh, routing uh, after the, the yeah, reactive, I, will be fine. Thank I think you. this uh, will blend into the the charter discussion. Make sure that I mean you think these these items are covered, but um, by the charter and you know. We need drafts um, to, to discuss this um, if, if it's going to move forward. Okay, yes. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can. Yes. Good. Um, I w would like to skip over issues we had with AODV in terms of metric and documents, but would like to focus on something even more important, running code. When we were talking about standardizing AOD version 2, even, even the authors of the document could not point me to a single working implementation. I think the best I got was something with a kernel module for 2.4 point something, which was 10 years out of date at that point. So unless this has changed and someone wrote a good reactive AODV or DSR implementation that works could currently, there's no point in this document because we have no value, we have no way to evaluate them if we have no implementation. Okay, Julius. Uh, Julius Krobacek. So, uh, well, uh, by the time, so when OLSRV2 and RFC standard Babel were developed, we had a fair amount of experimental data that showed that OLSR v1 and pre-standard Babel did actually work. There was notably the colossal amount of work that was done by a bunch of people, including Henning in the Battle Mesh community. There were a number of published results in the peer-reviewed press that indicated that these protocols actually work in practice and are not just a good idea, a good theoretical idea. I am not aware, so DSR and AODV are both extremely sexy protocols. They look really good on paper, but I am not aware of any published literature that indicates that they work not only in simulation, but that they actually work in the real world. It doesn't mean they don't work. It means only that I'm not aware of any uh, such published results. And I would very much welcome being able to work on DSR or, or AODB. They would be great fun to work on. But until we have experimental results that indicate that they actually do work, I think it would be premature to charter them in this working group. OK, thank you. OK, Henning, we got your presentation up now. OK, let's try this again. So. Some people will recognize most of this. So I started, I have quite a few DLAP drafts I would like to add to the working group, but I focused on the ones for the physical layer. Next. So these are the uh, currently uh, the radio band 
uh, draft is in the fourth revision and the channel utilization and radio quality draft in the third revision. Next. So the radio band is just primarily used for the radio to have a standardized way to tell the router what frequency resource it uses. So it's center frequency and the ba bandwidth. Next. This can be, for example, used in me uh, further metric experiments, calculating some kind of spectral efficiency. We can check this with current lists of frequency bands we don't want to use to make sure we don't have a misconfiguration in an external radio. And I knew some coworkers that like to work on cognitive radios, uh, so they want to adjust this frequency uh, and stuff like this on the fly during runtime. And with DLab, we could do this with the request link characteristic. That's why I think the radio band would draft would be useful document. Next, channel utilization. This is just some counters measured in nanoseconds, how the radio perceives the radio channel in terms of the channel is free. It's blocked or as a specialized subcategory of blocked, the radio has been reading data or writing data to the channel, sending or receiving. Next. This gives us a good estimate uh, what, uh, what we can do with the channel especially in statically allocated TDMR uh, channels. Because in this case, there might be time periods where we are not allowed to send and nobody else is sending because the time is just allocated for someone else. This draft would allow a radio to report correctly saying, yeah, this much of the channel is free for your local radio to use. This much I've seen data um, incoming through the radio and we could use this to, to be a little bit more sure how much more data we can send. Next. The radio quality draft tries to address the problem that on slow radios, especially VHF, we cannot do probing because the pro, pro media access is slow. We only get at best a couple of packets per second and that's not enough to measure the quality on a changing channel, especially on moving nodes. So we, uh, the radio quality draft has some values inside that could give us more data or check that uh, the channel is not disrupted by external devices. Again, I have some coworkers who tried things like automatic jamming detection by measuring the incoming noise level over the area of a manet. Next. So what's next? Uh, the radio quality draft needs some improvement. I got some internal feedback from a few radio vendors. And first I have to improve the text to make sure that most of these values are Dep dependent on the modulation coding scheme the radio is running on. So every time the bit rate the radio reports changes, we should uh, make, uh, make the uh, educated guess that the values are not directly comparable. Also, uh, it seems that the bit error rate is the much better radio generic value to report and to process. The signal to noise ratio, two radio vendors announced the concerns to me that the signal to noise ratio is very much waveform or radio dependent. So it's much more difficult to, to interpret. The semantics is not completely clear. I think it could still be useful for certain elements, but, uh, at a, but the bit error rate should definitely become a mandatory value. Next. So what's more work? I had some drafts planned for the radio reporting MacLayer statistics to the router. I'm not 100% sure how um, useful they would be. I had them in old private DLib implementation, but much of this uh, data can be uh, measured by the router itself by monitoring the local interface. And I have some uh, 
drafts planned uh, that allow the radio to report a little bit more about its capabilities. Things like I can transmit or I can receive multicast or not. There are things like LTE clients. Often you can send a multicast to the base station, but unless you have a, a quite flexible base station, the base station cannot send multicasts to the clients. If you know this, you can automatically configure a routing protocol to work around these problems or in some cases report an error. Then there's IP support. I have seen layer two radios that cannot do IP version six. It would be nice if the radio had a good way to provide us with this information that we are allowed or not allowed in most cases, if we want to report this to transmit certain IP data. Are we allowed to, to use VLANs or other protocols except for IP? This would be useful information. And last thing, service discovery. A lot of, especially military radios, have additional services like voice interfaces. Or maybe there's some HTTP port on the radio for configuration issues. If the radio could report to us that certain local sockets, in addition to DLAP, are you, can be used, then we can configure the firewall and the routing on the local router to make these available in some configuration interfaces, or maybe automatically connect to some voice interface of the radio. But still, this is for future work. I would first like to concentrate on the three, three phi related drafts. Next. Okay, any questions? questions? Uh, Ronald. Yes. Um, so first a bit with uh, chair head on or half on. Uh, we we uh, ran um, uh, a working group adoption call in September. Uh, I think it ended on the 22nd of September officially. Um, I was going to comment myself, the chair head off. Uh, I will still do that. Uh, but yeah, there were some expressions of support. Most notably, there was uh, most notable was an expression of support from a radio vendor. I think that was that was very good. Um, response was not overwhelming, but uh, is it ever? Uh, yeah. <laughs> in Monet in the last few years. So I'm inclined to um, call these, uh, these uh, drafts uh, adopted. Um, there is some work and I'm going to comment on some aspects of this. Um, and that's mostly with chair head off, but I see value. Um, I see value in the radio quality draft uh, for the reason that uh, Henning just mentioned. Uh, in, in, um, in radio waveforms with very little bandwidth, then you will want to use the local, uh, locally available information uh, to the maximum extent to, uh, to say something about the quality of the links. Um, that said, I think that the Channel utilization draft now says, uh, at least, uh, it defines a number of data items, and it it, it says that um, in in which messages these data items are used. The other two drafts, to the best of my knowledge, do not do this. So that would be one comment, but I will send that to the mailing list. And for the radio quality draft, I wonder whether we need three separate uh, extension points for the ex extension values uh, instead of one. So if we want to use a, a bit error rate and um, signal to noise ratio, and what was the third one? I forgot already. Um, then shouldn't these be three different extensions uh, instead of one so that uh, vendors can indicate which exactly what they support and what they don't support. 
Okay. I think uh, we should take that to the list, Ronald. Um, so now, we, now we're on the, uh, um, but, but don't go away. Uh, now we're on the charter discussion and I have your, um, your, um, your, your uh, slides on the charter discussion from um, the interim meeting. Um, just, just, I think what we should do is not, rather than go through these in, in complete detail, is just talk about, we had an interim meeting where we, had, we presented these slides, um, then we uh, took it to the mailing list for feedback and we, we got very sparse feedback and um, that's not a good sign if we're gonna take on new things. So um, we were given direction that unless there's um, strong support and it's support isn't just raising your hand but it's raising your hand and um, bringing new work to the, the working group that we're not gonna add it to the charter. So. With that, is there anything, Ronald, you'd like to point out in these slides that we should uh, take into account for the um, uh, the group? Because everybody, I think, has had a chance to look at this and go over the material. We haven't had a lot of things. I'd, I'd like to open it up for discussion of pointed things that we missed or, um, you know, that's <laughs> the way it's going to be. Ronald? Yeah, again, um, I've, I've been out of action for a month, uh, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, so a lot of things did not happen. I, I would have commented as an individual, as a participant, that uh, I'm really interested in some of the things that uh, Christopher Dearlove uh, posted uh, on the mailing list. Um, how we could... Um, use the existing OSR v2 specification to already reduce um, the amount of overhead that OSR uh, produces by some clever tweaking and then um, the potential for enhancing um, OSR v2 with uh, some uh, reactive mechanisms. Uh, I'm probably uh, misrepresenting uh, or not presenting fully what, what was in these emails, but uh, these are two aspects that I, as an individual, would like to work on. Uh, so much so that uh, even if the MNA uh, working group goes under, goes under uh, I would still try to find a way to uh, to work on, on that. Um, yeah, and as you, furthermore, as you said, yeah, uh, we would have, we had hoped for at least a little more attendance at the interim and uh, a more, bit more response to uh, the discussion that was initiated on the mailing list after that. But it is what it is. So, Multicast is still uh, on my list of favorites. I have some ideas, but I have a feeling that um, I first need to try some things out um, to find out if these, this idea holds water before I can bring it to the ITF. So that's not some. It's not something I immediately can uh, can write a draft about. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's it for now. Abdul Salam. Yes, uh, and kind of thing the charter, I uh, I agree that I I I, I missed uh, the last meeting uh, intern uh, last meeting, but uh, uh, we I think mostly we agreed with uh, the charter, but uh, there are some uh, some points maybe. Uh, not added from the discussions, but maybe uh, it needs uh, another round. I, I asked, I think also I asked the chair if they can uh, write like a proposal for the charter, which not without the points here, 
but uh, maybe I missed that. I'm not sure if there was an email sent on the discussion list for a proposal. And I remember that uh, we, we got also an email regarding uh, adopting uh, one uh, draft for Henning, which he presented today, but uh, still we didn't get any uh, uh, confirmation of adoption. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, the, it wasn't clear on the list. I mean, I went through the, the, the material, but it, it, was, it, it was weak response. I mean, we certainly can uh, hash out the charter. There, in the agenda, there is a, a draft uh, of the charter update from the previous meeting that uh, Ronald had put in there. And I put a link to it in the agenda. I can share that. Um, but, you know, there, there's some text to work from for that. Um, and it's, it's not heavily marked up, as you can see. Um, so I, I think it's something that, you know, we, we can, we can basically take on the list and, and, and hash that out, um, and make sure that we're not missing anything that was in the discussions. Julius. Uh, Julius Krobacek. I'm thrilled to hear that Ronald is interested in multicast. And, um, but I would like, uh, to have a little bit more information about how much uh, how much interest there would be in a multicast protocol that is robust enough to survive the Manet environment. And I have no idea how to do that. So that's an appeal to the chairs. If you can find a way to find out whether people are interested in that or whether it is just Ronald, me, and uh, nobody else, uh, I'd be interested in knowing that. Would you take a poll right now? Uh, do you want to do you want to see if you can set that set that up? Um, Henning. Yep, I have been uh, interested in multicast for quite a number of years, mm -hmm. but I must admit I came to the conclusion that I don't want to do multicast routing anymore because it seems every one of my different use cases need a different forwarding and processing semantics. So I have things like. We have things to consider like uh, some group voice channel distribution of live information like GPS positions or maybe distribution of data you want to share with your neighbors in a semi-reliable way. And for none of them, IP multicast is a good approximation. So coupled with the problem that we don't have a multicast forwarding plane in the Linux kernel, it will be quite difficult to get something good with multicast. Well, we shouldn't be limited by the the Linux kernel as a as a as a, um, a bar. I, I I don't think that should be a yes. Factor. But what do you propose if we don't you if Linux cannot do what we are proposing here? How do we want to test it? Well, but Linux can do multicast. It may not do it efficiently, but it, it can do multicast. Yes, but not for Manet. Okay. I can attempt to start a poll here. Uh, so basically say yes if you're interested in working on multicast and uh, no if you're not. We'll see what the results are. And uh, even a, a, a draft, an informational draft of, you know, the, the pros and cons of multicast henning would be useful, I think, to this group. You've thought about it. Okay, Julius. So I think there's a very good point that Henning has made, which I would like to stress, is that the multicast technology is going to depend on the use cases whether we're using it for discovery, whether you, we're using it for efficient data dissemination. And so in addition to knowing if people are interested, we need to understand why people are interested. No. So we've, I don't know if we need to wait further for this result. This appeared to be five people uh, 
in the current audience who are interested and uh, nobody specifically votes no so <laughs> right right i will terminate the show okay uh, well it's a one, one no so it's five to one david uh david lamparder um so linux absolutely does have a multicast forwarding plane however um classical multicast forwarding is probably provably impossible with the money um Ronald and I have discussed this before. There, it's possible to apply beer to a money, I think. Um, so the, the solution space is not empty, I believe. And I'm interested in implementing whatever someone might need. However, I don't have a use case myself. So I'm not sure how I would, I would have voted on the previous draft. Um, yeah, it's a solvable problem. But if, no one, if there's no consistent demand for this, then, well, yeah. Jim? Yep. Thanks. So, um, so on the charter discussion, I think, um, you know, one of the things as the AD I was frankly disappointed on was a very, very small amount of response to it on the mailing list. So, in order for me to even consider the recharter, I need to see people getting engaged on that mailing list and, um, you know, responding to what's been requested by the chairs in terms of what should we work on? And they've listed a whole bunch of things and whether you actually personally are willing and able to do so. Um, I'm going to let this go for a while. I think between now and Brisbane, I think we need to have that conversation on the mailing list. I don't think we can make any decisions right now, but I encourage everybody to please get on the mailing list, respond to the chairs. Let's have that conversation. Um, and then hopefully we can get to a point where, you know, there is actually uh, work to be done that we can show in that charter. Um, obviously, uh, and, and Ronald, the, um, you know, there are those four documents, and I understand the reasons why those haven't been progressed. Um, you, we already talked about that. But again, we need to see what we already have getting progressed um, rather than stagnant. So I, I guess that's really what I, what I say. So in, in summary, let's have the conversation again. We can restart the conversation. Um, on the mailing list, but if there's no response like this time, then you know we need to seriously think about um, you know what what it what is it that we're here to actually do. So um, I'm trying to put it as nice nicely as possible, but please get involved, get on the mailing list. Let's let's have the conversation. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. My name is Huda uh, Shehir. I'm from Tunisia. I'm working with the Tunisia Telecom Operator. Uh, so uh, I am very interesting, uh, interested in when your uh, activities. I want to know if you have proposed, proposed any solution to overcome the mobility of nodes. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, the question is, if have you considered or proposed any solution to overcome the, the problem of mobility? Yes. <laughs> um, well, I mean, <laughs> you want to you want to take that? Well, uh, I mean, th there have been uh, mobile ad hoc network protocols standardized, so those are solutions for some part of the problem space of mobility. Uh, Any well, algorithms are... But we're considering whether working on uh, alternative solutions that might be better in a certain contexts or improvements in the ones that have already been standardized. So okay. if you can ask more specifically, especially on the mailing list, you can probably get a more in 
lengthy and then detailed okay, response. Okay, thank you. Sure. Julius Krobocek, so uh, I haven't been responding on the mailing list because the chairs have been doing such a good job summarizing the things and I thought it was pointless to add a me too. And so in order to stimulate activity on the mailing list, I would like to suggest that the chairs say something stupid once in a while so that people can correct them. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what errors we can make to <laughs> encourage correction. From the... So, hello everyone, this is Zerqi from Tsinghua University and uh, uh, I'm a newcomer to this working group. Uh, I want to introduce first because uh, our group works on the some routing problems for the emerging low Earth orbit satellite network. So I think some uh, the emerging Leo satellite network may have some could be some very familiar with the magnet because due to the mobility, high mobility, and uh, unstable link connectivity. So uh, we our group has many uh, research on the routing uh, for the satellite network and if possible we maybe uh, we are happy if we can contribute our new ideas and works to this group if possible if our work fits the charter of this working group thank you so the question was on satellite networks do we have um somebody that covers like leo and those type of satellite yeah, networks? I mean, there is some work going on but um i need to look at the manage chart or is it just to really think that we could fit there, but, but again, a yeah. mailing list discussion. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jim was just suggesting if you can come across the microphone, a mailing list discussion on this topic, which I think is excellent. I think when I looked at the charter, it, it's many charters look pretty general to me. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I thank you for the suggestions, and then also also posting a, a message on the mailing list will be helpful. All right, we have a couple minutes left. Any other comments? Julius, you wanted an announcement about this bird. Uh, it's, in the chat. it's a back. It's a ways back in the chat. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, one moment. Ah, so there is a uh, meetup. What time is it? 1900, 7 p.m. of bird people. That's <laughs> the bird riding suite. Uh, and that's at uh, Svojka Karlin, which I assume is a restaurant or some or pub or some combination at uh, Pernovoska 697 slash 35. So it's in the chat. And uh, let me. Uh, repost it so it's at the bottom of the chat so you have a improved probability of finding it. Okay, this got, so it's now the, right now it's the last entry in the chat. So that's uh, people who are interested and here in Prague should consider going. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Did, oh, can I, can okay, I we got one more, one more comment, yeah. Ronald, a, a comment for you on the uh, uh, the IPR thing that we talked about earlier. Um, I yes. did a little bit, little bit of check in uh, um, in my spare time just now, and um, I think um, in the Shepherd write up you'll see that there's uh, some blurb on IPR, and I think as long as you can put in there a justification as to you know reasonable efforts have been made to contact the author that have all failed. Then I think we're, we're we're covered from a uh, from an IPR perspective. There there isn't a formal process, um, and that's actually been checked by IETF legal several times, and 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 there are reasons why there isn't a formal process. Um, but if you can put in the Shepherd write up, um, you know, just a, a blurb about that, you know, all reasonable efforts have been made um, over a period of time. You've had no response. Um, that should be enough for me to. Um, approve that when it goes through all 48. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I will do that. Uh, yeah. There, there, there is a, some wording already there. Uh, yep. tr trying to make the point that uh, for three of the drafts, we did have an IPR declaration from David Wiggins, 
but not from Baunen, but they're from the same organization, MIT Lincoln Labs. So, yeah, but I'll expand. Yeah, and, and, and I did notice on that there isn't actually any IPR filed for any of those documents. So, um, if and, Correct. And I, did know, I, I also noticed that one of the authors, um, and I think you just said that works for the, the same organization, right? So, if, if you've had an IPR declaration come back from that particular person, then I think we're definitely okay. Yeah, except for the four drafts where uh, there's only one uh, author of that organization. Sure, yeah. But um, the other thing you could do, uh, are, you, are you actually in contact with that other person or can you contact that other person? Because it could be that you could mention to them about the other three documents and, and you might be able to get a, a, an act from them, which, you know, from a company perspective. No, they both seem to be enrichable uh, at this point in time. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, just put it in the shepherd write up, for, get, get it through to me, and I'll, uh, I'll deal with it from there. Uh, will do. Thank you, Jim. Yep, thanks, Ron. All right. So we we'll look forward to more discussion on the mailing list. <laughs> See you in Brisbane if you want. Yes, would be nice. <laughs> okay. We'll Thank see. You. Thanks to all participants and thanks to the presenters. So, Ronald, good to see you more healthy again. Sorry, what did you say, Henning? Uh, good to see you more healthy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a bit of a surprise uh, a couple of weeks back when it turned out that I also had a thrombosis in my leg. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, okay. And thanks for your presentation. You're I welcome. Got, I got to get out of here. Yeah, see you. Bye.